I'm going to look at two hatchets that um, uh, you may think are uncomparable, but in fact they've got quite a bit in common. We're looking at the Gransfer's Outdoor Axe and the Fiskars X7 Axe or Hatchet. Do you call these axes or hatchet? What, what makes it a hatchet what makes it an axe? An axe, I always thought um, the ability to use it with two hands made it an axe, but a one hand only towards a hatchet. Correct me if I'm wrong. So the thing about these two tools is that although one is about a quarter of the price of the other, both are about the same size, about the same weight, and made for the same purpose. One, however, is a prestige tool, and one, however, is a mass-produced tool that is kind of a couple of rungs up from your standard um, Chinese hardware store fair, but still a fairly well-regarded outdoor tool. What I hope to come from this video is that despite the huge variance in cost in these two tools, um, I think the good message is that for either a lot of money or a little money, whatever money you've really got, you can generally get a tool that's going to do a really good job for you, um, for you to take outdoors. It's better to go outdoors with um, you know, any, hacks, any uh, hack, uh, hatchet or axe as long as it's not a, a faulty one, um, rather than taking none at all. So, although there will be some uh, differences between the products, um, the main message of this video is that both of them are good to have. So let's look first at the Fiskars X7. It weighs a little bit over 500 grams, uh, about 570 or so, I believe. Uh, this is made out of like a Fiskars um, unspecified high carbon steel. It uh, comes with a coated uh, Teflon covered head, which is uh, worn off for me a long, long time ago in most parts. And um, it's got a somewhat of a Scandinavian edge when you first get it. However, this one here has been fitted with a convex edge. Um, it's a cast handle, so the plastic of the handle is cast around the head. So there is no replacing that head uh, if it was to come out. However, Fiskars uh, and indeed most other YouTube reviewers, despite their best efforts, haven't really been able to get the heads out of these handles um, until they've done really obscene things to it. Uh, Fiber comp is the handle material. It's a plastic. It's a proprietary plastic. Fiskars claims is uh, indestructible, which is a pretty big claim. But really, um, for all intents and purposes, the things that you will be using it for, it's probably a true enough claim as well. Um, 14 and a half inches for this one from head to tail. And it's um, got a very similar sized head to the next axe, which we'll look at now. The uh, Gransfers uh, Outdoor Axe, a fairly new entry into the Gransfers line, sort of marketed as more of a survival tool than perhaps a bushcraft tool, but still obviously very good in the capable hands for any real woods our outdoor task. 14 and a half inch long handle, it's pretty much dead on 500 grams in terms of total weight. It's a um, slightly smaller cutting edge, but only slightly uh, than the uh, Fiskars. And I mean only slightly, the, sorry, the perspective is mucking things up for it there. The Fiskars edge has probably about another half centimeter on it, and it's a bit more of a, of a robust uh, head as well. It hasn't got that huge cutout that the, um, the Gransfers does. So some initial differences, the obvious ones are, this has got a wooden handle, this has got a plastic handle, uh, they've both got high carbon stainless, uh, high carbon sorry, st uh, steel heads, not stainless, and um, they're both sort of unspecified as to what exact formula that steel is. Uh, Gransfers just goes into that it's recycled, um, recycled steel that they claim is of high quality, and I've not seen any evidence to prove otherwise. This one comes with a collar around it to help with um, uh, robustness of the handle, and this one doesn't need such a thing because the handle is robust and um, very durable plastic. The wooden handle of this one is made of hickory. Um, this particular example uh, has, you know, fairly, um, you know, fairly angular uh, hickory, which is not ideal. Ideally, you want to twist it around so it's more that way. And um, however, for, for the camp use that you're going to be putting it through, not an issue. An American felling axe, you'd need something that is. Um, yeah, for that long-term durability, you'd want it a little bit straighter than that. Secured to the head with a wooden wedge, so it is a highly replaceable head if you needed to, which hopefully you don't, because who likes doing that? One point of comparison between the two axes is how they carry. You must forgive the rain, it's just uh, kicked on heavily here. The Fiskars has a very utilitarian, sort of hanging in your shed kind of handle, which um, just locks closed with sort of a plastic snap, and the Gransfors has uh, on the other side of things, a really nice leather mask and muzzle. And this is what you get from a premium product, which is completely fine. 
as well. Um, the good point about the Grand Spurs and probably the winning point mainly over the sheath, apart from the aesthetics, is that the Grand Spurs sheath can actually attach to a belt um, without needing any extra devices. You can just weave the strap around and under your belt and then click the strap on and it's actually fixed fairly well, as strong as that strap is, which is fairly strong and the snap is strong too, so just a bit of extra little um, winnage there from the Grand Spurs. So anyway, let's get to the tests and I'll be cutting in footage from here so you enjoy that. So I did some chopping with both. I chopped at a standing dead tree that had a diameter of about four inches and I used the Fiskars X7 first to fell the top of the tree and then I used the Grantsvis to cut sort of below that initial cut. And in this chopping test I did notice a superiority in the Fiskars mostly due to its heavier head. Both of these heads have very similar geometry in terms of being a little bit thicker than your uh, quite slicey, long, thinner bitted uh, felling or chopping axes. So in terms of this one chopping, the fist guys actually did a slightly better job. Both of these entered the fray with very sharp convex edges. The uh, factory edge on the Gransfers and the uh, work sharp convex edge done by myself on the fist guys. So the fist guys did chop slightly better. However, the Grand Spurs is certainly no slouch, and it is a little bit more nimble in hand and a little bit more comfortable to swing because of its wooden handle and lack of sort of rubberization, which can, despite the best efforts making the plastic as smooth as possible, can result in a little bit of stick. Um, then I just sat down and did some camp tasks with both, just splitting wood, chopping up wood, shaving up wood. And really, they both perform about the same. They really do. The main differences I notice is the approach to using them. When you come at a task with the Fiskars X7, you're pretty confident that that handle isn't going to break. You're confident that if it does miss strike, it's not going to take a chip out of the wood. And I know, you know, some of us might claim to be, I'm a superb, you know, woodworker. I can just make another axe handle just like that if I break my grances. I defy you not to use a wooden handled axe with a little bit more caution. Uh, especially when you're not, you know, a everyday bushcrafter. When you're just sort of a backyard or occasional hiker like me, you're um, you're just going to take either less care with the plastic handle or more care with a wooden handle. Which I mean, taking more care isn't a bad thing at all, but definitely a difference I notice in the approach to using the tool. Uh, also, the fact that it one has had 210 or 225, I guess, by the time it got here, dollars sunk into it, and the other has about 60 dollars sunk into it. Definitely does affect the mentality behind using it, which is a big and tangible difference between the two. So really, in terms of actual performance, I, I, I'd be lying to you if I said that the Grand Spurs is far superior to the Fiskars. I would be lying. However, it does have certain advantages over the Fiskars. I suppose one is that lifetime usability of it. You can always replace the handle from this head. Once the handle or the Fiskars, um, you know, the whole body of the piece takes too much for pounding, it probably is going to fail on you. But this is 20 years, you know, 10, 20 years for either of these to really need much maintenance. I've had my Grandsfors, my other two Grandsfors axes for probably five years now, and I've never had to do anything to them. Um, I cracked the handle of my small forest axe, and I fixed it with the glue, and I've used it heaps since, and it's absolutely fine. So the lifetime or the durability is really something that people go on, to, go on about a little bit excessively, in my opinion. So between the two of them, uh, in terms of advantages, I think it really comes down to what kind of um, user you are and whether it matters to you that you've got more of a, a heritage type tool or whether you've just got a beta tool that you don't have to worry or care about too much. And I know that seems like a real oversimplification, but I defy you. Just take both out and have a crack and see what see what you think. I use them as splitters, I use them just to chop and muck around with firewood, I process down you know small hardwood logs, this is real proper Australian hardwood so it's not nothing like ponderosa pine or anything it's um you know proper twisted mangly red gum both did fine. I used them as like sort of knifey shaving type tools you know it's not ideal, you'd rather use a knife but it does that too either one is fine. I split, chopped, they both do fine. And this is the message of this video. You don't need to be ashamed if you can only afford the Fiskars X7 because it's going to do all your jobs and if you're if you were in some kind of bushcraft contest competing head-to-head -head with someone you'd probably have just as much of a chance and 
yeah, it's not really not about the tool being a better or worse tool. It really does come down to the tool being a bit of an identity piece. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. But some people just don't care if their axe is fancy. And some people do. And I kind of do. And I, I call me shallow, whatever. I'd like to have a nice, like a flash tool to do my work with because it makes me feel more inclined to want to do the work. That's nothing I can fix about myself. And I dare say a lot of you are the same. It's the reason we all get $300 folding knives to carry news every day when really a $100 folding knife could do the same thing. It's the same principle. Just expand it to axes, which as more sort of hard use or more pure practical tools don't necessarily every day draw that kind of uh, comparison or that kind of need from their, from their clients. So yeah, if you need a axe, either of these will do. If you want your axe to be kind of the cornerstone of your, your experience and you want to get out and you want to love your tool and you want to hand it on to your kids and you want to take care of it and have a, you know, have a long and, you know, lovely friendship with it, then the Grand Swiss is probably a little bit better and you will see the value in spending the extra $200. But really, the point of this video is that they'll both do the same work for you. I know you get the purists, and it, may, it always amazes me that things like axes have purists, because uh, it's, it's a chopping tool, and as long as it's sharp, and as long as the steel isn't terrible, um, you know, to the point that it chips and goes dull really quickly, using wood against, using axes against wood, shouldn't really draw the type of fervor that it does, but it does, and I can already see the comments, the anti-fiscars, anti-polymer handle people, saying that I don't know what I'm talking about and that the Grantsfers have got this long and amazing history. Yeah, I've got no doubt, but take both axes out, swing both against the same wood, and I think that you'll see that either of them will do fine and it just becomes what kind of person you want. It's the same, the think of the Fiskars as like a Toyota Corolla, or like whatever, whatever you call your small, reliable Toyota or a Honda hatchback in America. It'll move you to work every day and it'll do it with no problems and it'll probably never break down. And it's made of durable pieces and it's made well. The Grand Swiss, yeah, it's probably a little bit more of a... It's a little bit more of a... I'm not going to say Lamborghini because it's a bit more reliable than an occasional use Italian flash sports car. But it's probably something more like a Lexus. Something similar. Maybe like a Bentley. Something that's made really, really well. But effectively does the same job. So... Just food for thought there, and just sort of a bit of a cautionary word against being too judgmental about the folks who take their Fiskars out, uh, rather than the folks who take their Grandsfers Brux axe out. Alrighty, so, Fiskars versus Grandsfers Brux, which would I get? I'd get the Grandsfers Brux, because I like having a nice flash axe. I like looking at it adoringly, and I like taking its leather mask on and off, and all that sort of business. I like the Fiskars too, but if I had to have one, and if money was no object, I'd have the Grandsfers rather than have the Fiskars and spend the rest of my money on something else. Alrighty, um, hopefully that's a good little discussion slash demonstration video for you. It's starting to rain, so I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you later.